Hello, in this video we're going to graph isoquants from a CES production function and talk a little bit about the elasticity of substitution. Here is a general form of the CES production function. Quantity of output is a function of labor and capital, and we got this parameter here, rho. If rho equals 1, this production function will be a perfect substitutes production function. As rho approaches 0, we get a Cobb-Douglas production function, and as rho approaches negative infinity, we get a fixed proportions production function. The elasticity of substitution, the ease in which a firm can substitute between capital and labor as a relative price of inputs changes, is given by the following. So sigma, the elasticity of substitution, equals 1 divided by 1 minus rho, where rho, again, is a parameter in our CES production function. And here we're going to restrain rho from being less than 1, but not equal to 0. And as we're going to see, as rho increases, which causes the elasticity of substitution, or sigma, to increase, the isoquant becomes more of a straight line, making it easier for the firm to substitute between capital and labor from a change in the relative price of labor. In example one, we're going to set rho equal to one half, and if rho is one half, the elasticity of substitution will equal two, just using that formula on the first slide. So plugging in one half for rho, and now we're going to graph the isoquant for q equals 100. So we're going to set the output on the left-hand side equal to 100, and we're going to solve for k. I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of this square term over here. Doing that, we get this. And now I'm going to subtract L to the 1 half power from both sides. Basically, we're solving for K. So subtracting L to the 1 half from both sides, we get this result. And now I'm going to square both sides to get rid of this K to the 1 half term. So squaring both sides, we're left with the equation for the isoquant when Q equals 100. So to graph this equation, we'll plug in various values for L. So if L is 0, We'll solve this, k will be 100, if l is 1, k will equal 81, and so on. So here's a bunch of different capital labor combinations that will give exactly 100 units of output. We could take these values here and plug it into our production function, and q should equal 100 if we did our math right. The graph of that looks something like this. So units of capital on the vertical axis, units of labor on the horizontal axis. All right, let's look at another example. In this example, rho equals 0 0.8. In that case, the elasticity of substitution is 5. Making our substitution for rho here. 1 divided by 0 0.8 leaves us with this all raised to the 1.25 power. Plugging in 100 for Q. And now we're going to raise both sides to the 1 divided by 1.25 power. So doing that to both sides. Here, 1.25 times its reciprocal would just be 1. And you're left with this. Solving for K once again. Subtracting this L to the 0 0.8 from both sides. And now we're going to raise both sides to the 1.25 power to get rid of this k to the 0 0.8. We raise both sides to the 1.25 power. And here's our isoquant for q equals 100. As before, we can put various values of L into this equation to get the corresponding value for k. All of these combinations, if we plug into our production function here, should give us q equals 100. A graph of this curve is much straighter. Let's put both curves on the same diagram. So the, the green line is example one, where the elasticity of substitution is two. Here, a 1% increase in the relative price of labor increases the capital labor ratio by 2%. Whereas the blue line is example two, the elasticity of substitution here is five. It's much easier for the firm to substitute when the relative price of labor changes. So here, a 1% increase in the relative price of labor increases the capital labor ratio by 5%.
So it's easier to substitute along this blue line in example two when we have a higher elasticity of substitution. Okay, I'll stop here.